We are currently living in an Anglo-American golden age, with blood spilt from World War II. It is the creations post this war and during the Cold War that make up the Western world. These newly created institutions are based upon Anglospheric ideas of law, rights, freedom, sovereignty, representation and democratic governance. Even the European Convention of Human Rights was created mostly by the UK and stems from human rights precedence in common law. Neither the UK or the USA trusted the Europeans on this subject post-war. And although these institutions were created to strengthen the Western world, the protection of the Western world still falls upon the hands of the Anglosphere, mainly the USA. The EU and other Western world blocs are still struggling on the world stage, as demonstrated through the hesitation and chaos during the Russia-Ukrainian war, where it was the UK who needed to take lead in Europe. Therefore, the English-speaking world need to start refinding their backbones. The greatest generation built the world we have today, but it will not last unless we're willing to fight for it. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected and handed on for them to do the same. Without the Anglosphere, the Western world will fall. And it's not fair for the American taxpayer that they need to maintain such a large army for its protection. And although nations such as the UK are doing our negotiated part, it could be doing so much more. If the Western world does fall, it's most likely going to be an authoritarian communist China that replaces it. The Chinese people have higher mathematical intelligence, political, racial and religious unity, and a single all-powerful political party. These one and a half billion Chinese will also soon have a modern military, a corporatist economy, and are all under a single unified bloc. Even with China's upcoming slump in population and economic troubles, they are still much more stable than the EU that relies on importing Africans, Middle Easterns and South Asians just to keep their populations stable. The worst that can happen to China is that they'll reform from being communist, but this does not mean that they'll become liberal democracies. In fact, it might even make things worse. Meanwhile, the Anglosphere is split up across the globe with varying amounts of sovereignty and unity. This after, the world was handed to them on a silver platter by the greatest generation, and they've nobody to blame but themselves. So let me now ask who still doubts this? For what reason, religious, cultural, ethnic or otherwise, should the USA and Canada be separate nations? As technology improves and the world becomes increasingly connected, why not unite their collective nation's pride instead of constantly dividing themselves? Everything that is deep-rooted in Anglospheric culture currently stands, but it won't forever unless they protect it. They are the same people with the same ambitions, with only insignificant differences. No other ethnic or linguistic group are as divided as the Anglosphere. The prolonged continuation of their people, their cultures, their heritage, or even their ideas depend on coming together. And the only thing standing in their way is their own self-deprecating nature. So join me on this channel as we overcome this and take pride in exploring the history of the Anglosphere. It's great people, it's man-made and natural landmarks, it's politics, it's major historical events, and everything else. I would go in-depth into subjects both popular and niche. Episodes will cover any and all aspects of Anglosphere history. For it is the doom of men.